What's going on everybody? Welcome, Josh Manda here. This is Mandatory Transformation. Today we're going to talk about carbohydrates and we're gonna talk about whether or not it's actually the primary source of fuel for the human body. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to bait that it is not the primary source for the human body. And despite what we might talk about and believe in our society today, uh, there are going to be a lot of key points that I'm gonna talk about that point to the fact that the body actually finds carbohydrates a bit cumbersome and that it is an actually an inefficient fuel source for the body. Um, so let's go through it together. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about how the body treats carbohydrates. Second, we're gonna talk about how we actually consume carbohydrates as a society. And third, uh, we're gonna talk about how the body prepares for carbohydrates. Now, originally I wanted to call this video um, carbohydrates and how the body actually treats it like a toxin because of this first quote that I'm going to show you right here. But I thought that was like a little bit too far to the other end. Um, but it's not that I don't believe it. It's not that this isn't gonna show it. Uh, but I really want you to understand here that carbohydrates, um, even though it's something that we talk about in our society as being the primary source of fuel, there's just a lot of misinformation out there. And when we break down the metabolism, okay, we just slowly take uh, our scientific data, our research, apply a little bit of logic, we are gonna start to see a pattern develop. So let's talk about that pattern that's developing here right now. So first, the first quote is from The Case for Keto by Gary Taubes. I'm sure you've heard of him. If you haven't, check out his books. He also wrote Good Calories, Bad Calories, one of my favorite books. Uh, but this is from The Case for Keto. He states, now imagine eating a typical mixed meal containing all three of the macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, leaving aside alcohol for the moment. The carbohydrates break down into glucose and enter the circulation and your blood sugar, glucose, rises. That quick, that glucose has to be used for fuel or stored quickly to minimize the toxicity of this quickly elevating blood sugar. The fat can be stored while that happens and then used for fuel later. And the protein ideally will be used for cell and tissue repair. So long quote, there's only one thing that I want you to take away from this quote. And that is these, this middle part. That glucose has to be used for fuel or stored quickly to minimize the toxicity of this quickly elevating blood sugar. Okay, the body has to stop everything else. So fat mobilizing hormones would, that would thus be deployed if carbohydrates weren't present, those need to be put aside. Fat needs to be put aside right now and carbohydrates need to be focused on. Protein has to be put aside. Carbohydrates need to be focused on. So everything kind of needs to stop to cater to carbohydrates. Um, and if it doesn't stop to cater to carbohydrates, then this elevating blood sugar could go to toxic amounts. Now, this doesn't sound like a fuel source that's very efficient to me. I'm sure it doesn't really sound too efficient to you as, as well, but we're gonna, we're gonna go through a couple of other examples as well here. So just remember, high glucose is toxic, which we all know in our society. High blood sugar, high A1C translate to a, translates to a lot of issues, a lot of comorbidities that we don't want to deal with that later on could exacerbate it to much greater things. So high glucose is toxic, carbs used or stored first. So the body needs to either use them or store them first before it does anything else. All right, the next quote. So if you're healthy, not diabetic, and you have just eaten a carbohydrate rich meal, you have around a teaspoon's worth of carbohydrate glucose circulating in your blood. That's what the body considers a benign amount of blood sugar. That's about four or five grams worth of glucose in your blood or about 20 calories worth. You'll be diagnosed as diabetic if your blood sugar levels while you're fasting are even remotely, moderately, excuse me, above that level. Maybe a teaspoon and a half of glucose or the equivalent of about 30 total calories of glucose circulating throughout your entire body. That very small number is the elevated blood sugar that causes so much damage in diabetes and that so many drugs are deployed to control. So I'm sure a lot of things kind of jump out at you from this quote. Uh, the biggest one that I kind of want you to remember is you have around a teaspoon's worth of carbohydrates. 
okay, circulating throughout your entire bloodstream, throughout the entire body that equates to four or five grams of glucose, okay, four or five grams of carbohydrate, all right? Now, if you can, for a moment, just kind of um, think about a time where you've eaten something that has 30 grams of carbohydrates, where you're consuming it at that one time, okay? Um, this is four or five grams that's circulating out throughout your entire body, and this is what your body considers to be a benign amount. So if you could just kind of put it into perspective as far as how many carbohydrates you consume in a day, okay, and what's considered benign throughout the entire body, uh, this kind of proves itself to be a little bit alarming, okay? All right. So if we follow conventional ideas about a healthy diet, we will consume about half our daily calories from carbohydrates, perhaps 1,000 to 1,500 each day, or 50 to 150 times more carbohydrates than are circulating in our bloodstream at any one time. So this quote just hits the other quote. It, it, it hits it home, okay? It just supports the previous quote in that that five grams that is circulating throughout your entire blood, we're consuming 100 to 150 uh, times what the body considers to be benign. So again, is this fuel source really efficient if we can't deal with large quantities at one time without having to stop other metabolic processes? Everything has to stop in its tracks. And the reason why is because it is at a detriment to our physiology. All right, so let's move on. Our bodies begin to handle this engineering problem by having the pancreas secrete insulin even before we eat, okay? So if this was such a great fuel source and this was such an efficient fuel source, then why does the body need to, before it even is ingested, okay? The body needs to kind of ramp the pancreas up to secrete insulin to get ahead of the fact that glucose is going to be flooding the bloodstream extremely quickly. Our bodies begin to handle this engineering problem by having the pancreas secrete insulin even before we eat. This is known as the cephalic phase insulin release, with cephalic meaning pertaining to the head, or in this case, what the head and brain are doing rather than the body. Just by reading the words fresh hot donuts, for instance, you very likely thought about eating and this cephalic process was put into motion. So. If the body didn't view carbohydrates as a threat or as something that needed to be dealt with in a very timely manner because it could be a detriment to our body, then why is it doing this? Why is it getting ahead of the curve? Why is it responding to the thought of it in your mind? Why is the body starting to release insulin before glucose enters the bloodstream? If this wasn't an actual issue, if this wasn't a problem, then why is the body getting a head start? The things that I want you to take away here to understand that carbohydrates are not the primary fuel source for these reasons. One, high glucose is toxic. Carbs used or stored first, 20 calories or five grams of glucose is benign. Humans consume 50 to 150 X what's needed. And then of course, to kind of cater to these three things, we have the cephalic phase insulin release that is basically just getting ahead of the fact that this very inefficient fuel source, this fuel source that can elevate blood sugar to toxicity levels that can affect the liver, the organs, and so on and so forth, if they are consumed for a long period of time, this is put in place. This is a, this is a system to just to protect us. But again, there are other fuel sources that are more, much more efficient. How about the very fat that we store in our bodies? And that'll be a topic for another conversation for another day. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Of course, shoot a comment below. Uh, what do you think of all this? Do you believe that carbohydrates are the primary source of fuel? Do you think fat is the primary source of fuel? What are your thoughts? Let's hear from you. Uh, and then of course, if there's anything that you wanna learn about, post below and I will be sure to post something on whatever you guys have questions on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been Josh Manda, and this has been Mandatory Transformation. You have a great day.